Hello and welcome to Animated Anatomy. My name is Faris and I will explain you the anatomy of the forearm. The forearm refers to the region from the elbow to the wrist. You've probably heard of the expression hitting the funny bone. Well, it's neither the bone nor it's funny. It's actually something else. To show you all these details and basics as well if you're not interested into details, I will virtually dissect the forearm with you. We virtually dissect the arm and we remove the muscle by muscle explaining the innervation, the blood supply and the blood drainage from that region, the origin and the insertion of the muscle. That way you get the better understanding of the position and the function of the muscle. You get the better three-dimensional understanding of the innervation and the blood supply which is really hard to get from the 2D anatomical illustrations from your book and from simple muscle alone explanations from anatomy. That's why we do the virtual eye section as if it was a real patient. The forearm refers to the region of the upper limb between the elbow and the wrist. Here's the elbow and down there's the wrist. The term forearm is used in anatomy to distinguish it from the arm a word which is most often used to describe the entire appendage of the upper limb. But in anatomy, technically it means the region only of the upper arm, whereas the lower arm is called the forearm. It is the same as the crust in the leg. The crust in the leg is the region that lies between the knee joint and the ankle. That's right here. The forearm contains two long bones, the radius and the ulna forming the radial ulnar joint. Here is the distal radial ulnar joint and here is the proximal radial ulnar joint. Remember, these two bones also are included in the elbow joint and the wrist joints down there. So you have the ulnar nerve, the median nerve and the radial nerve right here. If you look at my series and if you go to my website and check out my previous lessons, you will remember that I mentioned radial nerve when it was when I was dissecting the upper part of the limb and explaining the triceps muscle. The triceps muscle is innervated by the radial nerve. It has its origins in C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So basically you just go from C5 all the way to T1. Remember. Not only it innervated the triceps muscle, but it innervates 12 muscles here of the posterior osteofascial compartment, or also known as the extensor compartment. You can see how it releases its branches here and how they go deep down. And this is the deep branch of the radial nerve. This is what I'll explain later. Now let's get back to our median nerve and the ulnar nerve. This one here was the ulnar nerve and this one was the median nerve. The median nerve originates from the lateral and medial cords of the brachial plexus and has contributions from the ventral roots of C5, C6 and C8 and C1. So remember, no C7 in this nerve. The median nerve is the only nerve that passes through the carpal tunnel. So here we had the median nerve. If we follow the median nerve all the way up to the brachial plexus, we are not able to see it clearly, so I will remove the vein and the artery that's standing in our way. If you look at it closely, you can see here the lateral cord of the brachial plexus, and you can see here the medial cord of the brachial plexus. The third nerve that I've explained was the ulnar nerve. In human anatomy, the ulnar nerve is a nerve that runs near the ulna bone. Here is the ulna bone. The nerve is the largest unprotected nerve in the human body, meaning unprotected by muscle or bone. So the injury in this nerve is common. This nerve is directly connected to the little finger down there. And it is adjacent half of the ring finger, supplying the palmar side of these fingers including both front and back of the tips, perhaps as far as back as the fingernail beds. 
The nerve can cause an electric shock-like sensation by striking the medial epicondyle of the humerus here. I think everybody has experienced this. Normally, this happens when you struck the medial epicondyle posteriorly or inferiorly with the elbow flexed. The ulnar nerve is trapped between the bone and the overlying skin at this point. This is commonly referred to as bumping one's funny bone. To explain you the arteries, basically up there you had the axillary artery, the one that I removed, and then you had the brachial artery. The brachial artery gives away its, its branches or new arteries here, that's the deep brachial artery. Then here you have the radial collateral artery, and here you have the medial collateral artery. This one, remember, was radial collateral artery. If you look closely here, you will see one more artery coming out of the brachial artery, and that is the superior ulnar collateral artery. The blood drainage, I will explain it at the end. Now, when you finally understood the main things about the innervation and the blood supply, we can start explaining each muscle. And I prefer that we start with the posterior compartment because that exactly was the question I got at my anatomy exam. Let's start by this muscle here, brachioradialis. The brachioradialis muscle has its origin on the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus here. The insertion is distal radius down there. The action is very obvious, the flexion of the elbow. The innervation of this muscle is more than obvious because I have just mentioned that this nerve right here was the radial nerve, so it's obviously innervated by the radial nerve. Let's remove this muscle now. Down there, you can see this artery here. That is the radial recurrent artery, and that artery supplies the muscle with the blood. The next big muscle that we see here is the extensor carpi radialis longus. The origin is again the same as with our previous muscle, that is the lateral supracondylar ridge here. And the insertion is the second metacarpal bone, right here. The function, because of a different insertion location, is obviously different from our previous muscle. And that is the extensor at the wrist joint. Look, when it contracts, it's obviously going to extend the wrist joint. It also abducts the hand at the wrist. It serves as an abductor. The innervation comes from the radial nerve and the blood comes from the radial artery. Let's remove this muscle now and proceed further. This muscle here is the extensor digitorum. The origin of this muscle is the lateral epicondyle here. Many muscles originate here. And this tendon is called the common extensor tendon. The common extensor tendon is created by the extensor digitorum, extensor carpi radialis brevis. That's this muscle here. Then it's created by this muscle here as well. That is the extensor digiti minimi. And this muscle here, the extensor carpi ulnaris. So this tendon here is called the common extensor tendon because it's a common tendon. Let's get back to our extensor digitorum right here. The extensor digitorum is actually doing what the name says. It extends the hand at the wrist joint and it extends the fingers. The antagonists of this muscle are here. You can see them. It's this big muscle here. It's called the flexor digitorum superficialis. And this muscle is called the flexor digitorum superficialis because if you look closer here, right beneath that muscle, there is flexor digitorum profundus. So what we learned so far is that extending your wrist and your fingers is done by many muscles. You can extend only the index finger or you can extend, for example, the little finger. All of these little fine movements are actually accomplished by many muscles. Because there are so many extensors, 
I will explain the rest of the extensors in the upcoming video. You can watch this video here on YouTube. Or you can watch my previous video here on YouTube as well. If you like my lessons a lot and if you want to check out my software, you can go to my website animatedanatomy.com. However, if you don't have money to purchase my software, then you can at least subscribe. Thank you.